All right, everyone, another UFO was shot down over Canada earlier, uh, northern Canada specifically, in a remote area, you know, entered a Canadian airspace. Trudeau gave the order, but Biden gave the go-ahead for the F-22 that was U.S. source to fire on it. I guess Canada doesn't have the air power necessary to take out high-altitude balloons, which is great because, you know, if an attack comes over the pole... Canada's in the way first. Sorry, Canadian people, uh, with your uh, bagged milk and so forth, but it could be a little bit of a problem for you. Just saying, if the Ruskies decide to invade, uh, that's going to be one of the routes that they use. Cylindrical object. Um, they're claiming, although I will parse through a little bit of the claim itself, no, it wasn't a balloon. No, it was cylindrical and cigar-shaped object. You've heard this before. Uh, and they decided to fire on it out of an abundance of caution. Now, Again, this is the third time that I've heard uh, about one of these objects at high altitudes being fired on and downed in a single hit, which is really interesting because the original cope after the first Chinese spy balloon hit the airwaves was, hey, we can't fire on it, it's too high, it's too difficult for us to uh, be able to knock these things out of the air. Now, does that mean that this is a Chinese spy balloon? No, it could also be the U.S. and or Canadian government creating a distraction or testing new technology. Or it could be aliens. I'm not saying that it can't be, after all. Uh, to be clear, it is a UFO, though. Uh, we know that because it's something up in the sky that we can't readily identify. But I'm seeing uh, some warning signs going off here. Uh, when this sort of thing happens in a cluster, it's because of, of some sort of central and, and human source causing that to happen. It could be that China is testing new technology uh, and testing limits. Uh, and trying to get whatever data that they can. Um, and it could be that Western governments now have used the original balloon, which did come from China, that can be confirmed, as a smokescreen to test something itself and or uh, potentially both, influence the news cycle, actually. You get people riled up about Chinese uh, spy balloons or alien invasion or something, you can distract large numbers of people from other things that are going on, like congressional... Uh, uh, the Congress looking into uh, the Twitter files, the fact that the uh, Biden administration illegally pressured supposedly private firms to violate the First Amendment rights of U.S. citizens. Could be bad economic data. Could be, oh, uh, well, shit. Yeah, the war in Ukraine's getting less popular. Quick, give the people some more bread and circus. Give them a different type of bread this time. They were eating well on that wheat, but, you know, the, the, the reason for the season now is a seeded rye or something like that. I have a feeling that we're going to find out in the end that there was some sort of testing going on by one sphere or the other. Uh, if you have a different shaped object, again, high altitude, in proximity to the original balloon, which we knew was a spy balloon, it could be that China's floating different prototypical designs for something. That's always a possibility. It could be a high altitude drone platform. Uh, it could be a high uh, test for high altitude nuclear deployment. It could be a test for high-altitude balloons that simply do the spying thing. Maybe there's some sort of new technology that uh, is really effective, but it has to be closer to the ground than a satellite would be, uh, or something like that. The West, likewise, could be doing this as well. You send up the balloon, and then you bullseye it to see if you can. You're testing a new, a new type of uh, tracking system on the missiles you're using. You're testing a new development in tracking in general for radar systems or whatever. Uh, you're, testing, uh, you're testing the balloon itself. You're saying, well, can we make a balloon that'll go high enough, quick enough, so that it can avoid detection? One thing that I've warned of, and of course we don't know that this particular object is a balloon at all. Uh, it could be a drone of some sort that's not beyond the realm of possibility, or it could be a fusion of the two. Uh, first, I'd like to say a couple of the pilots up there apparently released... Uh, um, a report in, in their chatter they were saying well it's a cylindrical object can't quite tell if it even has a propulsion system some people are looking into that and saying oh my god it is an alien craft or it's some really great new experimental design you can't necessarily say that how close do you think that the pilots actually got and what speed were they flying at under what conditions would it necessarily be readily apparent what propulsion system was being used assuming that it had one no, so don't read too much into the hot take stories that you're getting there. One thing, though, that is worrisome to me is not the idea of spying balloons, although, again, they can be used as a platform to launch drones. It'd be sort of like having an aircraft carrier in the sky for a, 
uh, maybe uh, maybe tactical strikes within a given region. Uh, you could get it there without propulsion system under the right uh, weather circumstances. Deploy it near the target. As long as it can penetrate the airspace properly, then uh, of course you can deploy the drones and they can deploy their payload or do whatever they're, they're trained to do. What I've worried about though is the deployment of not necessarily nuclear payloads, although it's possible. We, we've got the capability to miniaturize massively. The Russians have it, the Chinese have it. Presumably the British and French have similar systems. We're not sure about the other countries. Of course, North Korea, I don't think so. Uh, Iran, I mean, uh, uh, Pakistan and India, probably not. They've got, they've got megaton level weapons, but I don't think they've achieved full miniaturization. In theory, you could miniaturize a nuclear weapon to fit in a briefcase and be carried around by a single individual. It'd be heavy, but you could do it. Uh, we had the Davy Crockett weapon, for example. Imagine if you took a, a couple of Davy Crockett's and hooked them to a little platform, and you attached them to a drone. But the drone is built specifically for stealth purposes. It's not built for speed or efficiency. It has to fly under the cover of night, but it's capable of entering an area at a low enough altitude or a high enough altitude under the right conditions with the right design so that it can't be seen by the enemy. And so you float a bunch of them in, and then you detonate them over military or civilian targets doing catastrophic damage on day one, uh, crippling the enemy's capability of response. You've leveled their capital, you've irradiated their, their airfields, uh, you've caused massive damage to their air and sea capabilities, you've taken out their carrier groups. This could be accomplished with today's technology effectively now. I've talked about the concept of a drone built for stealthy purposes covered entirely in Vantablack, so uh, at night uh, nobody would probably see jack ship. It is achievable. Um, that would be the scariest one, but of course a, a bright cylindrical object the size of a bus floating around over northern Canada it clearly is not a stealth drone. It's some sort of prototypical design um, deployed by somebody, or in, in the case of a cylindrical object, it quite literally could have been a coincidental weather balloon. Wouldn't it be funny, the Chinese try to deploy a spy balloon, but then there's a really breezy day a couple days later, and some other balloons slip their tether, and Xi is, is like, oh, Jesus Christ, now I have to deal with this bullshit. Uh, and then the U.S. government and the Canadian government realize, ah, oh, we've been given a gift. Let's blow them out of the sky to look tough and gobble up the news cycle. I have a feeling that's at least a secondary motive here. It also brings about memories, well, not my own memories, but historical memories of a past period of time, namely the early atomic era, UFO scare, United States funding and arming a, a country as part of a major proxy conflict, um, which is sphere-related. Uh, reheating of a Cold War, uh, you have that in the 1950s especially, uh, generally. Um, and now you have a, a UFO scare, you have McCarthyism as well. You have a massive censorship, government deploying assets to keep an eye on people. You have the corruption of the FBI, all like the Hoover years. Um, what's missing? Well, the only thing that's missing is actually having a good economy. Unfortunately, well, fortunately, I would say, but in the economic sense, economists think like this, by the way, there was no war to cripple all the industrial capacity of the United States competitors recently, so I don't think that that's going to happen. Maybe we'll have another crypto boom instead. It'll go into a bull market territory, mint a bunch of new millionaires, and then somebody will be able to buy eggs. It, it does look a lot like the McCarthy 50s surveillance and propaganda era all over again. We have even see it on certain medical topics recently. Uh, the uh, fudging of certain data on, uh, on things that I will not uh, talk about subject-wise on a YouTube video looks a little bit like what happened with the uh, tobacco companies now back in the day. Or to tell the truth, all the painkiller companies, uh, you know, of the 2000s. That's about all. Peace out.